I'm Mike, and today, can eating soy affect your hormone levels? Will it give you man boobs? How does it affect men versus women? Soon, we will see what the experts and the research has to say about that, and we'll also take a look at some foods that you actually need to worry about in terms of your hormones. There is a collective social fear of soy, especially for men. For a long time, I was afraid of soy and avoided it in any considerable quantity, based off no facts. All of this hype comes from how soy has phytoestrogens, which are estrogen-like plant compounds. They are known to be very weak estrogens, and because of their similarity to estrogen, they can sit in the estrogen receptors and block your actual mammalian estrogens from reaching the receptors. It's a bit like when you go to your dining room table to sit down and your dog is there in your chair and refuses to budge. Stubborn Phyto. This is described as an anti-estrogenic effect. Sounds sort of dangerous. Well, if you look at studies on phytoestrogen consumption, you will see that it is linked to lower breast cancer, lower prostate cancer, lower cancer death rates, less kidney disease, a 13% decrease in LDL or bad cholesterol, and also lower levels of heart disease. Yeah, but no one cares about diseases. They're more worried about losing gains and growing man boobs. I wish I wasn't serious. So to the important question, does soy actually manipulate blood levels of hormones? Let's start with men. Here's a study where men drank 400 milliliters or 1.7 cups of soy milk per day, a considerable amount of soy milk. Their testosterone levels stayed the same, good there, but it did slightly lower their estrone, a type of estrogen. It was lowered by about 3%, which is not very much, but it did technically make them more manly. Let's take this investigation to the next level. What happens when you feed men concentrated phytoestrogen? This meta-analysis looked at not just soy consumption, but also isoflavone consumption, which is the concentrated phytoestrogens, which are found in soy. They concluded that neither soy protein nor isoflavones, that phytoestrogen in soy, affect reproductive hormone concentrations in men. To recap, study that looked at 36 groups of men found that it did not change blood levels of hormones. All right. Now a bro might respond, that's cool Mike, as if I pay attention to science, but what about that men's health article that said that one dude got man boobs from drinking three quarts or 12 cups of soy a day, and then after he went off soy, his man boobs went away, huh, how about that? Let's investigate that. According to this study that examined the phytoestrogen content of various foods, if you take 12 cups of soy milk and compare it to actual soybeans, it's less than one quarter of a can of actual soybeans worth of phytoestrogens. Soy milk is of course mostly water and presumably they filter out a lot of the phytoestrogens with the solids. When you combine that knowledge with how gynecomastia or man boobs are actually pretty common, affecting over 30% of men to some degree at some point in their lives, and how they tend to naturally go away after a few months as the body balances out, it's fair to say that anything could have healed those man boobs. Jumping jacks at 5 a.m. on one leg, guaranteed cured my man boobs. Okay, but how does soy consumption affect women? I have to say it is worth noting in this study, women with the highest soy protein intakes throughout adolescence and early adulthood had nearly a 60% lower risk of premenopausal breast cancer than women with the lowest intakes. That is huge, especially considering breast cancer is the leading cancer. Back to hormones, here is a study that looked at over 200 women who ate about 50 milligrams of soy phytoestrogens per day, and they concluded after two years that there was, quote, no significant intervention effect on any of the serum hormones. That means blood levels of estrogen did not change. And here's a meta-analysis of 47 studies that looked at not just soy consumption, but again, that concentrated phytoestrogen from soy, and found that phytoestrogens do not affect blood levels of estrogen in premenopausal women. It is worth noting that they found a one-day increase in cycle length. Whether that was a balancing effect or not, I don't know. But going back to that study that looked at over 200 women for two years of eating soy, that one found no difference in cycle length. So that's worth considering. Now for the fun stuff that actually changes your hormones. Most people don't know that dairy, as this study shows, actually raises blood levels of estrogen in both sexes and lowers blood levels of testosterone in men. 
Here's a chart showing the statistically significant 25% spike in blood levels of estrone after drinking milk, and a very powerful and equally statistically significant lowering of testosterone. That is what men should be afraid of, and yes, these are just some of the dozens of naturally occurring mammalian hormones found in cow's milk. But people don't seem to be afraid to drink cow's milk for the hormonal effects. Soy, on the other hand, that's really scary stuff. This might be why vegan men have higher levels of testosterone than omnivores. And yes, I have to say it, higher levels of testosterone are associated with larger penises. Fact. In the end, the beneficial effects of eating soy far outweigh the entirely unsubstantiated risks of it. Don't take it from some guy on YouTube. Here is what an expert has to say from this review, quote, the clinical evidence overwhelmingly indicates that there is essentially no basis for concern. Men can feel confident that making soy a part of their diet will not compromise their virility or reproductive health. I wouldn't binge eat soy every day and yes, absolutely go for the organic soy, but under no circumstances is soy an excuse to not go vegan. Even if you're allergic to soy, there are literally millions of plant foods that you can eat. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to subscribe and like. If I get enough likes, maybe I'll drink 12 cups of soy milk. Who knows? All right, thank you for watching.